So in a given cycle, that's what I'm coaching people on. Now, I coach on, on everything, like like how to find your voice in life. I coach on how to handle conflict. I coach on lots of things, but they all come back to accelerated growth. I've got agents that were doing 45 deals per year for 10 years, never broke that, that, that did 60 deals in the first quarter of this year. You know, I didn't set out to coach just real estate agents. I was a women's basketball coach for a decade, and we were doing really unique things, like teaching every player the seven habits of highly effective people, the principles of good to great. This was back in, you know, 1999, and and we were doing so many unique things, we began to win at a very high level. And I, I really called that competitive intelligence. I was building a competitive intelligence. The more we won, the more people asked me, what are you doing? I didn't have time to explain it because I was trying to win championships, yeah. so I started yeah. writing books. And when I started writing books, people began to say, will you come speak to my group? And that were big companies like Dell and State Farm and National Healthcare. And, and so in 08, I retired from athletic coaching. I won a championship. I came back one more year. My speaking business was really going crazy. I was on my fourth or fifth book, and um, I retired right in the middle of the recession in 08, March of 08. The first people to hire me were banks and real estate companies and big home builders, specifically big home builders, because they were used to selling 700 to 1,000 houses, you know, making a fortune, the owners making 30, 40 million bucks, and they were selling four houses a week. And so I was out speaking, and these owners would see me, and they're like, man, we don't know what you have, but we need some of it. So, <laughs> so, and I didn't know anything about the home building business. I didn't know anything about really selling real estate, but I came in and put in systematic coaching because that's my background, systems and processes and how we coach people. And, and everybody got better. We got everybody profitable during the recession. And because I was getting those people and having success with banks and real estate uh, companies, big real estate companies begin to hire me. So over the last 11 years, virtually every big firm that's out there has brought me in at some point. I had a national contract with Remax uh, last year to do 35 events for them. I've done Century 21. I've done uh, Cowell Banker. I've done, you know, you name it. Keller Williams, you, pretty much everybody yeah. I have either spoken to or many of those have hired me to coach their teams, you know, where I'm the coach of the entire office. And when you're speaking to them, what is – something that stands out as far as that one message that you really want to get across to these people? My core message in life is that left to our own devices, we all contract and retreat. A good coach can change your life. Now, I speak on a lot of things. I speak on topics like a book, like person of interest is a big concept I teach. How do you become the man or the woman, right? Or my new book is Inside the Mind of a Monster because my coaching program is called Monster Producer. And I want you to tell me more about that. Yeah. And, and my wife has got a book out called Living with a Monster. Right? Yeah. I, when we were looking you up and doing everything, I, I said to my wife, I said, Elizabeth, look at this. Yeah. Living with a Monster. Yes. I mean, sounds like, sounds like something you would read That's a book about she needs. me. Huh? That's a book she needs. <laughs> but so my, my overarching theme is there are five big missing structures in every business. It doesn't matter what business that is. People do not know how to explain their services in a world-class way. They don't know how to generate leads through a prospecting system. They don't know how to follow up appropriately. They don't know how to extract referrals from every transaction, and they don't know how to become people of interest. So in a given cycle, that's what I'm coaching people on. Now, I coach on, every, on, on everything, like, like how to find your voice in life. I coach on how to handle conflict. I coach on lots of things, but they all come back to accelerated growth. I've got agents that were doing 45 deals per year for 10 years, never broke that, that, that did 60 deals in the first quarter of this year. I mean, I've got some success stories of agents that I've coached that uh, shown significant growth as a result of just the coaching process. Coaching is engaging a person in a set of systematic behaviors that allows them to do something tomorrow they cannot do today. Like, because I don't come from the real estate world, I have a unique way that I coach people, right? Like, I have unique structures because um, I'm, a, I'm a former basketball coach. I think in terms of probability and structures and repetition. And I like to, I like to say I bring a little vuja day to the real estate world. Uh, that, and that's a new way of looking at an old situation. Got it. Okay. <laughs> 
one of the things you said is, uh, you, you know, you want people to be able to find their voice and tell their story. And what I'm huge about is advocating to tell your story because I firmly believe if you're for everyone, you're for no one. Yes. And if you're out there as an agent and you're trying to cover, you know, the entire state and doing this and you work with this person and that person and all these different niches and whatnots, then who are you? What do you do? But outside of that, I think that people are covering up who they actually are as mm -hmm. a person mm -hmm. um, to be that, you know, they see that other agent that's selling 75 houses, mm -hmm. 60 houses, and they think that person is doing phenomenal. They have a great life. Mm -hmm. I just have to work hard for, you know, and do all these different things and whatnot, and my life can wait. I just need to focus on selling houses. And then they start just getting into doing all these different things, which they really don't do anything if they yeah. actually look at it. What do you think is a, a good piece of advice to that agent that's, you know, they're working here and they're working there and they're going backwards and they're trying something sure. new and then, hey, and, and actually another penny just rolled by. Should I try that? Actually, we're not doing that after, you know, doing it once and it didn't work. What's one piece of advice for somebody that's just all over the place? Well, I think a lot of people are all over the place. I was deeply scripted by Covey, uh, who wrote The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, you know, The Eighth Habit. And he taught a theory called the whole person theory, that people are made up of four parts, a body, a mind, a heart, and a spirit. Each of those parts produce four different needs, four different intelligences, four different capacities. But he also talked about helping a person find their voice in life at the intersection of passion, that's an irresistible belief for motive or action, talent, that's skill, right? Uh, and we talk about unique ability, some superior skill set typically recognized early in life, uh, rewarded by the market, gives you energy versus drains your energy, right? Need, like where does your talent solve a problem for another person that they would compensate you? And conscience, what is your conscience telling you to do? Like, like what's the big thing you're supposed to be doing? Now, at the intersection of that, and I, was just, I just came from a real estate retreat where I was coaching a small team, 10 agents, worked for Big Builder. Big Builder says four or 500 homes per year. And we spent a full day on helping each agent find their voice at the intersection. They're, you're not selling houses. You're selling beliefs. You're selling conviction. You're selling unique ability. Most agents are selling houses, which are commodities. No matter how nice the house is, you, you know, you've yeah. been around expensive. There's always a better house. What you're selling is a set of beliefs between me and you. I believe there's a difference between a house and a home. A house is made up of sticks and bricks, and a home is made up of memories, Right. Definitely. I believe every person deserves the right to have a professional represent them when they buy, sell, build, or finance real estate. I believe that most of the wealthiest people in the world use real estate or have real estate in their portfolio. So I have these core beliefs that I'm selling, right? And I teach my agents that I'm coaching, leave with what you believe, don't leave with what you do. So the agents that you're talking about are chasing fads. It's cotton candy. I'm looking at what somebody else is doing, trying to be them. Don't, re you, you can, you know, mirror what another person does. You can be inspired by what another person does, but you need to be you. You need to find your voice in life. And that person that's doing 120 deals, you're right. I've coached all of these people. I've coached people that have drug addictions. I've coached people that have been through five divorces. I've coached people in the real estate market, right, that look good on paper, look good on Instagram, but, but, they, but they don't look good. And so I coach the whole person, and that's one thing that separates me from other real estate coaches is because what good is it to have – uh, skill with no desire. What good is it to have desire with no confidence? I'm coaching the body, the mind, the heart, and the spirit. And that comes from my deep background in Covey. One of the things that I tell people is when it comes to social media and when it comes to the posts and the videos and whatnot that we're advocating them to do, um, one of the things that I like to tell them is, hey, if you have to Google what to post, you probably shouldn't post it. That's right. Why? That's not your voice. That's, That's right. not what you believe. That's right. Because if you believed it, you would have already said that. Yes. And if you don't believe it, if it's not your voice, why would you post something else? Yes. And, uh, you know, so then the question is, then what should we post, Jonathan? What, you know, what video should we do? I said, do you have a phone? Pull it out. What, what are you doing right now? Right. Tell people exactly what you're doing. Hey, you're at a real estate conference. Oh, but they're going to think, you know, I'm in New Orleans, so I must be drinking and I must be at the <laughs> casino. And, you, and know, you may be. And, and, and you may be. Um, but guess what? Those are the people that are going to resonate with you. Sure. You're going to resonate with yes. them as well. But guess what? If you were to pull out your phone and say, hey, look, I'm at this phenomenal conference in New Orleans. I'm surrounded by hundreds of other like-minded people. Yes. I'm, I'm connecting. I'm growing all of this to not only just for you, but for myself. And this is phenomenal. And, you know, then I'm going X, Y, Z. I said, there's, there's your post. 
Yes. Um, oh, I didn't know it was that easy. And I said, yes. yeah, it's not about creating content. It's You can go and Google all these different things about what to post. You can download schedules of all these different topics and you can try and knock them all out. At the end of the day, if you were to pull out your phone and just document everything that you're doing, there's your social media. That's right. And another thing that I like to say when it comes to social media is, hey, it's about you being happy and then reinforcing that. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing something that is not making you happy, how do you think that's going to make you feel in, in five years? How do you think that's going to make your family feel? What, what is your advice of people that are in social media and they're posting business, they're posting personal stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any specific ratios or do you have any specific advice of, hey, these are the things that you should be doing just to reinforce your story, reinforce your voice, so that way you can attract like-minded people? Well, I think... I think when it comes to social media, I do, I do believe with Vaynerchuk on this, that you should jab with value three times before you ask for anything. And, and I, I think before I post something, how will this affect another person? I don't think about me. I think about I shouldn't post it unless it helps you. So I ask this question. Will this post give another person confidence? Will it give them energy? Will it give them direction? Will it give them inspiration? And if it doesn't, even if it's about me, hey, I'm in New Orleans speaking at this conference, but, but here's something I learned today that can help you. See, we, we live in a consumption society that if, that if it's all about you, then, then what, what, what's in it for me, right? That's what people are thinking. Like, who cares if Coach Burt's in New Orleans or he was just in Florida or he has his own jet, whatever, right? In, unless I can make it about the consumer, they don't care. So when I wrote the book Person of Interest, think of it this way. People of interest live interesting lives. They go to interesting places. They do interesting things. They hang around interesting people. Capturing that is really what it's about, right? Like I tell the people that travel with me, the videographers, just catch me being me, coaching people and being authentic and being real and catch the energy on stage. But also I'm okay with you catching the bad moments. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with you catching catching me when I'm not on. I'm okay with you catching me and my six-year-old daughter. I ca- catch it all. Like that's part of my life, Right. So I've been coached by some of the top media coaches in the country, right? And one of the things I consistently got in trouble for years ago was I would not be vulnerable enough. So it was always boom, boom, boom. Coach Bird is like a machine, right? And they're like, people cannot resonate with this. They don't think you ever have a bad day. They think you wake up motivated every morning. And, and they, they, so they kept saying, you got to tell better stories. And you got to talk about the heartbreaks you've had in life. And you got to talk about the knockdowns you had and the broken t- spirit times. You understand what I mean? Definitely. And, and, I, and I resisted that. I really resisted it for years. I'm like, no, I'm not showing that side of my life. I'm not talking about growing up with a single mom and my dad wasn't involved in my life. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. Like, these are private things. But, but over the past two years, the number one thing that has made me a more effective communicator is, com- is being completely transparent and authentic and telling it all. And when you hear me speak, I'll tell it all, man. I'll tell the good, the bad. I'll talk about my, my past. I'll talk about the, the knockdowns, the, everything. Like when I talk about rejection, I talk about rejection because I had a terrible breakup at 25 of a woman I thought I was going to marry. I bought an engagement ring. I had to take it back, you know, and it was, awful. it was an awful time in my life. But because of that, I wrote a book on confidence, how to build, maintain, and protect your confidence. So the number one thing I tell people is be you, be real. Some will like you, some won't like you, so what, right? You're only looking for people that are looking for you. But don't be somebody you're not because that's cotton candy. I think too many people are caught up in, well, that, that didn't get me any followers. I, I only got 20 likes on that. Sure. You know, it must, not have, it must not have been a good post. Aren't you going to delete it? So why would I delete it? Yeah. Did you, did you know about that one person who sent me a direct message saying right. how that impacted that's their right. lives and how they did that's this, right. this, 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 this? Yes. Oh, no, I didn't know about that. Yeah, that's yes. the reason why I do this. Yes. I don't do this for likes. I don't do this for followers. I'm doing this to help people. And at the end of the day, your followers and likes are not going to follow you to the grave. Yeah. They're, you're gonna, the next person is going to be the next person. And yes. who cares about all that? That data goes away and you just have a... You have a profile that's no longer active. So who cares about the profile? If your voice is coming through your social yep. channels, that you're going to build trust with people that your future clients are going to see, hey, when you, I go to a listing presentation, I already know this person. Right. I know everything about his family, his that's kids. Right. He likes that's doing right. this. He doesn't like doing that. And at the end of the day, if I'm sitting at the table 
and that person feels that connection with me, anybody mm. else who walks through that door, they've never seen, they don't know anything about, except they're the number one producer and, and that's all that they know. They trust me and like me more. I have a much higher probability of winning that listing just because of that. When it comes to storytelling, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was telling you a little bit about the army. One thing that I was being trained in was to be an interrogator at Guantanamo Bay. Mm. And we got into why people think the way they think, mm -hmm. why people will say things that they don't realize they're saying, why criminals will say that they've done it, but they actually didn't do it. And it actually gets into the brain and how it works. Mm -hmm. And one cool thing about storytelling, which I like to tell people is when you tell a fact, it only triggers two portions of your brain. A fact triggers two portions. Mm -hmm. Storytelling mm -hmm. triggers five portions of yeah. your brain. Mm -hmm. And people go, wait, what? I said, if you tell a story, you're getting that person to envision themselves as part of the story. How do they fit into this story? What is the outcome going to be for them? If you're listing a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square feet house versus come into this house after you've had a barbecue with your family, come yes. warm up by the fireplace, put the, you know, put the movie on and then you know that you're home. Well, there's a massive difference in that. And I, and I advocate in storytelling. I think that a great story as all stories have a, a beginning, a middle and an end. And like you said, I, you know, definitely also believe in the, the, you know, provide that value before you're, you're asking for anything. What would be a, a good ratio as far as if somebody has been going down this line of providing value and providing so much for people, when's a good time for them to say, Hey, also, I, I am a real estate agent. Sure. You know, I, I don't want you to forget that. Um, if you know somebody, hey, could you could you refer yeah. them my way? What would be an I, advice? I, I want you to think that you're really an entrepreneur that has a very special skill set in something. It could be negotiation. It could be in regulating emotions. It could be in connecting to anybody, anywhere, anytime. Like, that's how I try to coach the agents, right? Like you're really a businessman or a businesswoman. You own a business, but you got a very special skill set. And I want you to become known. See, famous is just becoming known in your market for something. That person can sell houses faster than anybody. That person can negotiate better than anybody, right? So what I believe is always have something in the future to push people to. This is one of my greatest selling techniques is I create what I call structures. And a structure is anything, a physical structure, a mental structure, and I always have something in the future to invite people to. Hey, if you like this, come to this. And I do stuff for everybody. I'm, I'm doing faith-based events. I'm doing kids' events. I'm doing uh, couples' events. And I go, hey, if you're like me and you're out there watching me and you're interested, come, come to Person of Interest April 24th at the Lodge. Hey, if you don't like that, I'm speaking at Man Church at New Vision Baptist Church on this day. Come to this, right? If you're a man and you're trying to reconnect with your faith, hey, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm a big believer in give your salespeople something to push people to in the future, the barbecue, something, customer appreciation events. Like I study the real estate stats, and here's what they tell me. Number one, they're scary. How so? 67% of people use the very first agent that contacts them. They don't use the best one, the best looking one, the most experienced one. Almost seven out of 10 just use anybody, okay? Um, the average person is going to buy four to seven homes in their lifetime. 98% of agents never call a customer back once they put them in a home. Although the National Association of Realtors says every transaction should be worth 5.7 referrals over the lifetime of the consumer. Every stat in the world says that most sales happen between 7 and 15 touches, but most agents don't have a 7 to 15 touch system. They only go one or two times. If that. So when I'm coaching an agent, I'm like, it is so easy for me to help you pick up 15 deals, which is going to change your whole life because I'm going to go to work on these things. We're going to answer the phone and be accessible because we call on agents to sell them into our coaching program, and my team's like, they never answer the phone. Never. And, and so here's the deal. For every 30 people you talk to, only 4.8 are going to be interested and open. Those are the innovators and the early adopters, right? Then early majority are going to have to hear it maybe three to seven times. Late majority is going to have to hear it seven to 15 times. 16% are laggards. They're never going to hear it. So volume is so crucial. So when I'm coaching an agent, I'm like, we're going to get really good at these things and you're going to dominate. Like you're going to see a lift. Like I can get you 15 more deals easy if you just do what I'm teaching you to do. That's the basketball coach in me. There's a missing structure. I'm going to fix the structure, and we're going to win more games, right? And when they ask, but, but, you know, 15 deals sounds great. I've only sold one house, but what if I could do 
70 because this new piece of technology just came out and they said it was easier if I just buy this, then they're going to do that for me. I don't even have to call people anymore. I, you know, I can just do that and then I'll just add this and I can go from one to 70 and they've, they've never really done anything. There is no wealth without work. <laughs> there, can you repeat that? Yeah, there is no wealth without work. There is no shortcut. The process is just important as the product. And the agents that work my system that I'm teaching them, which is a game of probability, but it's very calculated, specific daily actions, right, are the agents that are crushing it. And I can take a little baby star agent and drastically increase. I can take a big agent. My biggest mortgage originator is doing $147 million. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like it works, but, it, but you got to have a long obedience in the same direction. So we kind of jumped into just starting to talk. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, about your company, about everything that you're doing? I'm, not, I'm sure we'd be here for too long, but just, you know, give us a brief sure. synopsis yeah. and, and tell us more about, you know, who is Michael Burt? So I found my voice very early in life. I knew at 15 I was supposed to be a basketball coach. I started coaching junior pro basketball at 15. At 18, I was an elementary basketball coach while I was in college. I went to the second largest high school in Tennessee at 19 and became the head coach there at 22, which I was the youngest head coach in Tennessee at the second largest high school. So take whatever state you live in, and I was at this big powerhouse high school, and I'm just really a kid at 21 and 22, but I was doing unique things that I mentioned earlier, what I was teaching the kids, the whole person theory, bringing business to the athletic world. So I began writing books on that philosophy. Here's how I'm winning. So many people were asking, like the biology teacher would come down and say, what are you doing with these kids? Because they love it. And people would come watch us play and say, what are you doing? So I began writing really books on personal growth and kind of inner engineering people to win. Competitive intelligence, how to build cultures that produce. And that led me out to speak. First, not professionally, just people wanted me to come speak to them. I didn't even know they would pay me. <laughs> and I would go speak. And I was speaking at Dell Computers to their management team small business division, and they said, man, we really love this. Will you come back? I'm like, no, I'm not interested. I've got kids to coach. I'm trying to win championships. Thank you, but I'm not interested. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yes, I'm not interested, right? Like, thank you for buying my book, but I really wanted to just be a coach. And they gave me a check. The check was more in an hour than I made in a whole month. And I'm like, man, maybe I could do this. <laughs> like, maybe I'll come back tonight. And so I began, at that time, a third book, then fourth. Now I've got 13 books out now in the market. And like I said, at 31 years old, I was at the peak of my career. I just come off being one of the number one coaches in the country. I had this powerhouse team, and I just was unfulfilled. There was a bigger destiny for me. And I felt like I was being called to go out into the world and help more people. So I retired, which shocked everybody. Like, you're at the peak. Like, why would you quit now? And, and I, I walked in and told my players that, um, that I was retiring. They cried, and I cried because it's all I'd ever done. 16 years I've been a coach. So I'm starting this coaching business. It's really a speaking business, and I'm speaking. That's all I've got. I got some books, and I'm speaking, right? But it very quickly became, Will you? Wh what if we paid you to coach our team? So a bank comes in and says, we're going to pay you a lot of money to coach all 500 of our people, and we got this big goal, and you're in charge of these 500 people. And I went in, and I'm like, okay, man, let's, let's do it, right? And for a year, I coached them. In the very first year, we got a 43% increase in sales, which was millions of dollars to their top line. And as soon as I did that, light bulb goes off. I could do this for more people, right? And so I started coaching companies. So I had big corporate contracts, which I still do today, where I am the coach of the entire company. I speak, I coach, and then I built a coaching program that has about 700 people in it called Monster Producer. And that's the program that lots of real estate agents get in, lots of mortgage originators, and I teach it live every month. I'm still a big live person. And so people either come in person or they watch it online and then we build in accountability structures. But it is structured right now that everybody gets coached by me, which is almost unheard of. Definitely. Most people, I hear a person speak and they're really good, but then I get somebody else. And that person is in another state and they have no idea what's going on. So people say, well, it's not scalable the way you're doing it. It really is scalable because I can teach it live. No different than a pastor teaching at a church that has 78,000 members. I mean, it is scalable because I can preach at one place and it can go out to all these other places, mm -hmm. right? So I still go to different cities. I go to Houston every month. I go to Knoxville and Chattanooga every month and I teach it live and these little pods of people come. But we've really built a pretty rabid tribe of people 
that um, in exchange with us. And then we go up in levels. We got a basic level, it's like six thousand a year. Then it goes to twenty five thousand a year. Then it goes to forty, sixty, eighty, and even a hundred. Um, so, so we've got these different levels, and at different levels, you get different things, right? Like it's, it's so it's really been a good thing. And I think it's phenomenal that when you start talking about something that you love, you light up like a Christmas yes. tree. Um, and that's that's you know, that's what people will will see and. I think it's phenomenal for, for me to be able to say, hey, social media is powerful that you can send a direct message to get somebody in on your yes. podcast and resonate with them so much because that's what I'm getting right now is, hey, Jonathan, you had just a phenomenal real estate business. Why would you give that up to go do this? Right. And I said, and, and, and well, I didn't say one thing. I just, you know, start talking for about an hour about <laughs> how much I can help people, how yes. much this is helping people, how yeah. much well, what if you do this or this is not going to be scalable or you got to do this. I don't care. We'll yeah. get there when it gets there. That's right. And and I don't personally believe it's ever going to get to the point where I say, okay, this doesn't work because if I believe that, then, uh, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people that I talk to and they talk to me and, and they're talking and I'll tell my assistant, I said, that's not going to work for them. And he'll be like, why? I said, they're talking about it and I can firmly tell yes. they don't even believe what they're saying that's right. right now. And if you do not firmly believe what you're saying, it's not going to happen. It doesn't matter about anything that you're going to do. If you don't believe it's possible, it's not going to going to happen. Yeah. And for me, that's a huge shift in mindset that a lot of people need to have. Well, I want to put a framework to this because yeah. what you're saying is I just came off a retreat. I do these really cool retreats with big time people. And I did one with Tim Grover, who was Michael Jordan's coach, wrote the book Relentless. We did that a month ago. He and I are good friends. I did. I just did one in Vero Beach with Tim Story. And Tim Story is a celebrity life coach out in Hollywood that coaches all the celebrities. And he said something once that gave me the perfect framework. To do anything big in the world, there's, there's really three steps to this. First, you have to have some big revelation. Okay, you've had that. You've had that revelation. I can help people. People are hurting in different areas. I can help those people, right? There's some big aha moment. A, a revelation is a dramatic uh, experience that alters you. It's like, oh, I'm supposed to be doing this, right? Because of the revelation, you then have conviction, which is deep-seated belief in you and what you're selling, right? And you can feel that conviction. What you were talking about is I can tell people don't have conviction, so they don't go the distance. They quit when it gets hard, right? Because of the conviction, what am I willing to do? Whatever it takes. I'm willing to take the action. Now, I've gone through that cycle, which is why you can feel my some people would call it passion, but what you're really feeling is my conviction as a result of my revelation, which is, which is why I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Go to New Orleans, go to Florida, go to South Africa, wherever, wherever, because I believe everybody needs a coach that badly, right? You've gone through that cycle. Now, if another person hasn't experienced that, they can't understand the revelation you had. They can't understand the conviction you got. They can't understand why you're taking the actions you are. That's okay. That's okay. That, that's, that's, that's okay for them not to understand it. I tell people I'm only looking for people that are looking for me. I love that because, like I said earlier, if you're, ever, if, you're for, if you're for everyone, excuse me, then you're for no one. And I think that too many people give up too early. What's a piece of advice that you give a real estate agent mm. that is giving up before yeah. they should even be thinking about giving up? There was a Eugene Peters, Peterson book called Long Obedience in the Same Direction. And he was a pastor, and he talked about how how easily people fell off in their faith, you know, like he would go see them after they didn't go to church on Sunday. And, and he would say, man, I, you know, I need you coming in to church. And they'd be like, well, pastor, that's my fishing day. Like, like you don't expect me to come every Sunday. You know what I'm saying? And he just wrote this book about how you stay focused in a long direction. Okay. 83% of real estate agents quit in the first two years. Okay. Mastery typically doesn't happen. I want you to think of mastery like this. First, I watch a master. Like what you were telling me, you got to work with the master in real estate, right? Yeah. You observe a master. That process could be five years of watching, learning, taking notes. Then you begin to practice what you see the master do. Then, then you, over a long obedience in the same direction, you become a master, and other people want to emulate what you do. That's the part that's missing today. The average 20 to 30-year-old, is changing jobs 24 to 37 times. I spoke at a university last week, and I, I have a program for young professionals called Monster Young Professional. Almost every student out of 100 
came up to me afterward. I said, I'm doing an event at my house next week. Everybody's invited. I'll teach you. I'll pour into you. I'll coach you because I feel like I'm supposed to be doing something for the, for that generation. It's a very confused generation. And almost every kid came up and said, I'm there. Like, I love this. Like, they're so hungry for someone to pour into their life. But they, they need to hear someone like me say, long obedience in the same direction. 10,000 hours of practice. So an agent that starts and, and, and fails and quits, you're never going to be great at anything. Where you start with good intention, you fall off the wagon, you experience guilt. The guilt is associated with grief. You're grieving your lost potential. So how do you justify quitting when it gets tough? Like, you know why? You hadn't gone through the revelation. You don't have the conviction. You're and not. you're trying to do it on your own. Yeah, yeah. It's so like the solopreneur. I get it. I, I, I understand why people think the solopreneur, like by myself. And but there's only so many deals you can do as one agent. Like I have a team of people. You know, I'm running a company. I'm not. I'm not running um, a solopreneur. Like I have a COO that runs the company, and I have a sales team, and I have different divisions. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm. I'm not. It's not just Coach Bird out there d- driving the bus and selling the shirts and and selling the books and speaking and coming up with the content and selling everything. Like, that's how most agents think, is they are the chief cook and bottle washer. I, I was telling you as we walked up here, I think that uh, as far as the industry as a whole is concerned, uh, unfortunately, our, our industry, the real estate industry, is riddled with tons of different stereotypes about who a realtor is. And, you know, unfortunately... The, the stereotypes of cheesy car salesmen that does this just to rip you off. They'll do anything to make a dollar. They drink all day. They play golf all day. They don't even work. Uh, and you have these disruptors that are coming into the market to say they're, they're, they're drunks. They play golf all day. They don't do anything. You shouldn't right. use them. Yeah. I'm trying to create what I would call a monumental transformation mm-hmm. in the way that people think the word realtor means for them. It does. It's not going to mean the same for everybody, but I think that what it means currently is unfortunate because there are phenomenal people doing phenomenal yes. things and they're not telling people all of the phenomenal things that they're doing. And the reason that they're not telling them is because they, they either one, they're scared. What, you know, how do I look on camera? You know, let me fix my hair. Let me do this. Uh, two, they think that if I say that they're not going to like me, they're not going to believe what I believe. Three, they're not going to work with me because uh, they don't like these different things. And in order to create a monumental transformation, what I'm looking for is other people that also believe we can make a monumental transformation. And for the people that are coming to me and saying, hey, Jonathan, I don't think that's going to work. Okay. Uh, They don't believe the same things you do. Yeah. And and, and then I said, that's fine. You know, and and people will come to me all the time and say, hey, Jonathan, I'm great at uh, cold calling and whatnot, and you're advocating for social media, but I'm not good at that. And I said, how many houses are you selling? Yeah. Oh, 125 houses. Keep cold calling. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, well, then it gets into, well, well, actually, you know, I'm getting a divorce next week because of this. And I said, hey, look, it's not about what you're doing, probably. It's about what you're not doing. And what we need to figure out sure. is what are the things that you're not doing that you need to be doing, or you need to have a team to be doing for you. And if you can plug those things in, that's when you create this business and life that you love. I know your time is super valuable. What is one last piece of advice that you would give to an agent that just doesn't believe in themselves? You know, confidence is the one thing that affects everything. This is the the greatest play that I'm doing with kids now because I've got an online academy for kids. We're getting it into school systems. You can buy it individually. And we have made up our mind as a team that the one thing we're going to tackle is confidence because a confident person will take risk and opportunity. An insecure person will not place themselves in any environment where they could fail. Confidence is the memory of success. It is, it is an internal knowing that you can create or manifest something you see in your mind. Now, so the question becomes, where does it come from? It comes from consistent, ongoing, systematic practice. It comes from muscle memory, which is why in sports, we shot 500 shots a day. We practice four and a half hours a day. Like agents, don't train enough. They don't role play enough. They don't get tested enough. Therefore, they're not getting any better. You you, training is not something you did. It's not, it's not you go to impact agent conference one time and that's your training for the year. You need to be training every day. Military trains every day, right? Definitely. World-class athletes train every day. 
Big time people train every day. Small time people train a couple times a year or go to a few conferences. It should be content, repetition, role play, and testing. Some people call me crazy because I have a what some would call a morning routine that's a little bit different. I wake up and I write what is going to happen for the day. Yes. What is going to, you know, what are my wins? What do I want to happen? You know, and what I'm thankful for, what I'm grateful for. I usually actually don't write about what's happened in the past. I write about what's happening in the future. Yes. And people go, well, how can you be grateful for that if it isn't, it, it's not happening? I said, because I'm going to make it happen. If I yeah. firmly believe every single day that these are my goals, I'm going to write them out. And this is exactly what is going to happen. Yeah. It might not happen as fast as I would like it to, but it's going to happen. And I'm going to manifest that yeah. happening. Yeah. Because I firmly believe in, like you said, muscle memory. Hey, if I tell myself this is what's going to happen, gonna happen, I'm going to hear something a little bit differently when I'm standing in a crowd of people and I hear somebody talk about something and I go, wait a minute, that's, I need to connect it with, I need to connect with that person because he knows the person that I need to be with. And I wouldn't have even thought about that because yeah. I didn't rehearse and I didn't practice and I didn't that's just... Right inscribe in myself this is exactly what's going to happen this is what i'm grateful for and this is everything that i believe every single morning and i and i tell people if they you know mm. don't have a morning routine i say this is exactly what you need to do when you wake up the first three things that you're thinking about which are usually on your phone put those to the side you need to have your own time in the morning self reflection gratefulness affirmations and you need to write what's going to happen today because if you can win the day, you're going to win the week, you're going to win the month, and next year you're going to say, it actually happened. Uh, it, it's not going to happen the, the same day sometimes, but that's okay. Yes. Continue to believe in yourself, have the confidence that it can happen, mm -hmm. and things are going to work for you. Any, any last words? I know that it's, we're kind of like doing well, like a brief ending there. I, but. I, I, think, I think the ending is this. Everything you said is right. You have to tell your brain what's going to happen. I say 98% of agents do not map their days out or plan their days. I spend 7 to 15 Or their year. Yeah. That, no business plan. That's right. I spend <laughs> 7 to 15 minutes every night. I have a planner that I created, and it has my high-value activity. A, it has my goal versus my actual. It has my high-value activity, my three big high-value activities. It has my targets I'm going after that day. Those are my hit list. It has my farm club, people that have indicated interest. We're trying to close. It has my 25 big relationships in there, like, and it time blocks on the other side, and I do that every night. I get myself off Saturday because that's family day. <clears throat> but, but every night I map out my next day. Most people will never spend time doing that. So they're in a defensive posture versus an offensive mobility. Age, big time agents come in and it's, I'm prospecting a minimum of two hours a day, nothing but new money. I'm working a selling system, right? I've got a million dollar follow up. I'm extracting referrals from my current clients. I'm doing events in social media. I'm pushing people to something in the future. Like, 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 we teach that. We teach people how to do it. It's just sometimes people don't go and execute it. Therefore, they keep getting the same results. Where can people find you? Where can they connect with you on social media, your website? Sure. Yeah, it's real simple. Coach Burt, B-U-R-T dot com. And you can search Coach Michael Burt, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. And um, you can find me. I'm doing a lot of stuff on Instagram now because that's where everybody is, right? And, and so just search Coach Michael Burt. I do spell it E A L M I C H E A L, which is and, a and I had to figure that out. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. A lot of people way. found the you know got the wrong Michael Burt, <laughs> and he's not me. So, uh, so the just, real Michael so Burt, the real Michael Burt. Search Coach Michael Burt, and you should be good there. I appreciate your time. I appreciate all the the insight. Like I said, when sure. you when you talk about something, you really light up yeah, like a you. Christmas tree, and yes. and that just you know. I don't even know what the word is, but yeah. everybody can feel it. And see, That's there's right. no word that can feel that passion other than. That's what it is, and it is what it is. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate Jonathan, your thank time. thank you, man. Thanks for taking the time to do this and for what you're doing in the world. You're doing big things in the world, man. I appreciate so, that. So, God bless you. Thank you. You as well. Thanks. Hey, everybody. This is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment. Shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.